Hi hey guys, how we doing? So, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Probably going to go ahead and, other than painting the nose, we're going to get most everything done on this guy today. Um, this is actually a friend of mine from works. She saw me working on my Basset Hound and reached out and asked me if I could help fix his nose, which got a little bit chomped on. So we're going to use clay mixed with plaster to kind of fix that. And then we're also going to take care of this. Which this just needs hot glued back in place. And then because I can't just give something back halfway done, we'll touch up a couple of spots of his paint. Pardon me, I forgot to plug my hot glue gun back in let's see so you can kind of see let me turn you just a little bit there he needs that put back together and that's what we're going to start with Thankfully, this little glue gun does actually heat up really quickly. So, we'll probably start here, since this is the smallest section that needs stuck back down. And then I figure we'll do this section and just work our way forward from there. <clears throat> so, I am really thrilled at how much response I've gotten of late to my pet videos and if you like a lot of those I do share a lot more of my pets on Facebook rather than I only put some of my videos on to YouTube of them simply put I don't always remember to mute the television before I turn on my phone and we're doing a great job of building this channel and the last thing I need to do is get myself some copyright strikes because I forgot to mute the television when my birds demand very, very well known. Uh, and pretty heavily copyrighted movies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't know where my voice went for a second there. If I sound a little bit worn out already, um, we had a little bit of excitement this morning that I would could have, we all could have lived without, especially my mother-in-law, who unfortunately did fall. She is okay, but picking her up is not the easiest task in the world. Thankfully, there was no major injuries or anything. She's just going to be a little bit sore for a couple of days, probably. This thing is going to heat up eventually. I really, really should have thought to preheat it, but... Well, I'm human. I'm just waiting patiently to see one little dot. And now I see my one little dot. We can actually get started. Ooh, no, you don't. He's trying to go on adventures without us here. There we go. That is going to work wonderfully, I think. My goal is just to get this to where that 
that matting is in its proper place so that she can set him pretty much wherever she wants to set him without having to worry about him scratching her floors. I'm just kind of guessing on the scratching of floors part. Because I actually don't know the if this goes in a carpeted area or a hardwood area. There we go. I did not break my glue gun, I just forgot to push the glue stick in properly. If you ever need to make spider webs, pull the stretch, pull the pot glue is a, an excellent way to mimic it, by the way. Though the last thing I want to do is send this guy home looking like he's got spider webs all over him. We don't want to do that. This is one of my favorite things is doing stuff like this for people's beloved little oddball pieces of art <clears throat> just the idea that we can give somebody back something that they have loved for many many years is always going to be a special idea to me so that's that laid back down we're going to turn this little gentleman back over, and his weight will push that glue the rest of the way in. And then we're going to unplug this little guy. And hopefully I'll get myself undone from the hot glue spider webs. There we go. So I meant to grab myself a paper plate for this. I forgot. Let's see if I have. I do have one handy. From the last time I decided to make something with plaster of Paris. So basically the idea of what we're doing, let me check and make sure that I'm not too far zoomed in on you guys. You know, feel, throw a few things around while we're at it. That's always fun. Okay. Now I just have to figure out where I put my pot. There it is. So we're actually just using cheap uh, kids clay for the base, but I am actually going to be mixing it with the plaster of Paris, which will kind of imitate the ceramic because I don't have, I don't have the ability to mix my actual plaster to the proper consistency to, while being able to actually shape and we're doing this by hand since I don't actually have any models of any molds of dog noses I have some creative molds but that's one I don't have so we're just basically working this in here and we'll add water if we need to but I'm hoping not to have to do too too much I just basically want it to a little bit of a thicker denser uh, consistency because the foam 
clay is actually very, very, well, foamy. It's great if you're doing little bits with kids or if you're trying to make slime, things like that. If you want something that's going to be structurally sound, it's not necessarily the best bet. But it's definitely better than nothing. And it's a lot easier than sitting here making you guys wait while I try to mix the proper consistency in just Plaster of Paris by itself. And yes, I am the strange one who has a water source in my cabinet because, you know, why not? This has gotten a bit gooier. So we're going to start with just kind of shaping it out and trying to pull it into match up some of these bite marks. Let me have to soften that just a teensy bit more. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's try this again. So this is not, as we've discussed a time or two in the past, this is not my strongest suit. I am not a very good uh, sculptor by any stretch of the imagination. But... I'm pretty good at winging it through a lot of different uh, ideas and figuring out what's going to work, what isn't, and just kind of keeping at it until I get the right solution for the problem. And the idea here, I may have to come in and kind of sand this just a little bit once it dries. But, the basic idea is give the little guy a nice passable nose that we can then paint up and hide the fact that one of her dogs decided it was a convenient little chew toy. And I have repaired more than my share of dog chewed things as we were training Loki, so there is zero judgment on my side from that. And I We're going to pretend like my back end did not just turn my heater on, which is kind of hilarious, actually. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm using the nostril that didn't get demolished to kind of show me how the one that did should look.
And as I said, I may have to sand it a little bit here and there just to get this smoothed out that last little bit. But now we're going to beef out that snoot just a little bit here. Because most bassets, even puppies, have a little bit of a squared nose. This is really not the easiest type of thing to do just from memory, but basically what I'm doing right at the moment is I'm getting the uh, profile correct and then I'll turn it around toward me here and or come around beside you guys and make sure that we have the front looking a little bit more proper. And if you ever told me when I started on this journey that I would eventually end up giving not one but two Basset Hound statues nose jobs, I would have told you you were bonkers. But I have zero regrets because this is actually kind of fun. Oh, that actually shaped out pretty nicely, didn't it? Now, Sorry, I'm, I know you guys are just getting the side of this, but I gotta give him that kind of nostril effect, which is not the easiest task. not too bad. I'm actually not not ashamed of that at all. So I'm going to go over it and texture it, but there we can kind of see. We have a pretty workable nose. one of my big beefy brushes might be the answer for giving that kind of bumpy texture that we need for a dog nose. Just like maybe this guy. I've never ever seen a dog's nose that was actually smooth. So literally all I'm doing right now is just tapping the nose with the bristles of this brush to kind of create all of those little pores. Let's smooth that out just a little bit there. if we can smooth this up just a little tiny touch more. As I said before, we're probably going to have to hit that just a little bit with some sandpaper probably tomorrow. So I do want to finish this guy up before I go back to work because I do work with his owner and I would really love to be able to take him back home at the end of the week. I'm 
I'm just kind of looking, trying to make sure I didn't get it too, too piggy. There we go. So now that's going to have to dry. Uh, and I may have to do a little bit of shaping and uh, sanding on that in uh, once we can start him tomorrow. But for now, that should do him. Now I just have to figure out what I did with a nice At least today I had the good sense to change my shirt. Um, well, actually I'm wearing a sweatshirt over my shirt, but that's beside the point. So what we're going to do today is just touch up some of the white spots to start with. And we'll see what that looks like time-wise before we see what else has to be done tomorrow. But already he's getting a good start. There we go. I don't like to take him off my table until he's completely dry. So let's see. Oh. Um, one of my birds has decided that so everybody needs to pay attention to her right this second. <clears throat> So you can kind of see there's just normal wear and tear and maybe a few teeth marks. And we're not going to try and force this to look brand new. I think that takes some of the charm away from it. We're just basically going in and touching up anywhere that could, that having the, where we've got exposed uh, ceramic or anywhere that's just kind of beaten up a little too, too much. Just basically bring him back a few years here. He's absolutely adorable. I think this one's actually cuter than my statue because he looks almost like a puppy as opposed to mine looks like an adult. And they really did some incredible detail work here. Like around the eyes where it's got the droop to it. Which is one of those details about Bassets that I absolutely love. Is their lovely little droopy faces and the big long ears that as puppies they just trip over like crazy. Might have to trim that up a little bit over there. Oops, I left just a little bit of suds on him there. But you can kind of see where there's little oopses here and there. We're not trying to go bonkers. We're not trying to erase the history of the statue. Just trying to give him a little bit of that life back so that he'll last that little bit longer. There we go. And it is a little bit tricky because you can see this is almost more like an either an airbrush or a spray paint. So trying to not take away from that 
progression from one color to another is going to be a fun challenge. But if we haven't noticed by now, I do enjoy a good challenge. And I think he is going to wind up being very, very cute with his new nose job. So I think we're going to stop him there for now. Just simply I don't want to keep messing with that nose until it's dried. And I can go in and sand where I need, add a little bit more if I need to in places, or, you know, chip away a little bit. But we have a start. Um, I am actually pretty happy with the shape of that nose. I feel like we got it pretty close to right. So we will pick up on this guy again tomorrow. And until then, I will talk to you guys next time.